Okay, welcome everybody to uh, Deep Dive with DUI. Um, this is our, our June um, session. Um, so if you've, and just as a reminder for everybody that has joined us today, um, that we do this once a month on the first Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, and want everyone to know that it's gonna be run on Facebook Live as well as this Zoom presentation. Um, if you're viewing this in Zoom, be sure that you're watching this in presenter view. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please um, send them to me in your comment in the comments or the chat area, and we'll get to them as as soon as we can. And I think I'm going to change my background here real quick because um, I'm having a hard time with. Apparently, I need a haircut, and it's not liking my. Um, oh, it's still bad. Um, it doesn't like my hair. Anyways, we'll go with it today. <laughs> um, we are also streaming this live on Facebook, um, which will monitor those chats also. So if you have questions, you can also chat there. Uh, immediately after the presentation, all of this will be on Facebook Live or Facebook um, for, for playback. And later on, we will also post this on the YouTube channel. Um, as a reminder on the YouTube channel, we also have posted our DUI quick tips. Um, right now we have a bunch of, of the retro quick clips if you haven't seen some of those. Um, so it's lucky I found some of them on, on an old, old archive version of, of our website. So um, so some of those are live um, and we'll be posting a lot more as, as they happen. So today um, I'd like to start off and introduce our speaker um, and, I'm, and that's Jorge Roman. Um, he's with Lucia Baja Norte, and you're going to have to excuse any of my pronunciations with any of these things because um, I found that my my Midwest accent um, and my lack of other languages, I, I pretty much butcher anything in other languages and pronunciations. Um, anyways, he's a PADI uh, IDC staff instructor, tech diver from um, the Tijuana area, and an interesting fact, he is he started the first dive shop in Tijuana, which seems kind of crazy to me that, you know, I mean, it's brand new roughly. I mean, just in the past few years. So that's, that's awesome. Um, he's been diving for over 15 years. Um, and let's see what else do I want to talk about here. Um, he's also one of the volunteers of the Rosarito underwater park, uh, which has to do with the Yurube um, one to one, which we'll be going over some of that today. And he'll be talking about, some of his processes with that. Uh, so with that, um, first of all, I'd like to say hello, Jorge, and welcome. Um, and and before, don't forget, you're gonna have to unmute yourself just in case you're not unmuted. Um, <laughs> so, but before we, we get started, I, I like asking a question of what is your passion with diving? I mean, what is it? Is it photography, tech diving? I mean, uh, it's what excites you about diving? Well, um, I haven't thought about it um, much until somebody gave me a warning, warning uh, yesterday. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jorge. Um, so what I thought, and I think it's something that it was in the back of my head, but I never got to get it as a conscious thought, is the, uh, I started when I was younger to do hiking, mountaineering, and a little bit of rock climbing. And the thing that it has in common with, with diving that I think I love about it is the, uh, the exposure to the elements and to be there uh, in nature, but uh, to be able to, to enjoy it, but also in the sense of exposure as when you're climbing a mountain and uh, you might not zoom it, but uh, you try and you can always come back and it's important to be safe and to uh, not die trying it. So it's the same approach that I have on diving. And I can be diving in a pretty uh, close to my house place. And it could be that it, many people have dived before, but the exposure that I get is from going there without a guide, uh, with my training, with my experience, with my body, and explore it like it's, it was the first time that it was uh, explored. So diving, diving new sites, it's what excites me. Yeah, it's a scuba diving is an interesting thing. It's like, you know, it's especially like for myself, it's interesting because you, you know, you know, I dive so often at the, in the La Jolla area and there's so many tourists that come by and they're always like, did you see a shark? You know? And I'm like, uh, yeah, but it was just this little tiny thing. 
<laughs> you know, it's just a, it's a whole new world. It's just exciting. And then, you know, I like sharing that with other people too, you know, so I'm always, you know, with the kids, I'll, I'll take my camera and start showing them the photos and stuff and they'll go, wow, an octopus, you know. And, and I was surprised because you very recently start to at least publish pictures. I didn't know that you took pictures before. And, uh, and it's something that I also got into because I wanted to share with other people uh, what I saw, because you can explain that with words, but uh, I think video and photo, those uh, are better uh, explaining, but even if it gets uh, short, it's not the same as being there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun sharing it. So, um, and that's, you know, why we're doing these things. Cause I, I like, you know, talking about places I either have dove or I'd like to go diving um and just you know it's it becomes a learning process for me in you know adding all these bits of information you know because you know scuba diving for me is actually kind of a new thing but i'm i'm very passionate about it so how long have you been diving uh i started diving in 2013 so it's so i'm like a, a newbie <laughs> <laughs> um but but yes i do hit the water you know three to four times a week you know so i'm so i'm not like you know diving like once or twice a year in those times it's yeah. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's always the the. I think it's more accurate to have a count of your dives more than how long ago you learned to dive. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. I think you're you're almost advanced, right? Um, maybe. <laughs> I, I I have the peak buoyancy down. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, let's let's get started with your your presentation because you're uh, presenting on the. Baja Norte area. Yes. Uh, should I share my screen then? Right? Yes, you can. And I'm going to unpin myself. There you go. So you're you're the full on spotlight now. So go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Okay. To hold on. I didn't do the portion of the screen thing. <laughs> Preset it. It's okay. Yes. Um, the thing I'll is, we're, we are real people. We're divers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, and the thing is, the funny thing that I didn't ask uh, art to my bio is that I study IT. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, you, so you're able to operate email. <laughs> oh, because apparently I cannot make this thing to see. Uh, to show on the screen. I see something. I'm almost there. Yeah, I just need to do this a little larger and think we're good. Okay, so just let me know, Jack, if I'm uh, making something wrong and maybe they uh, get read, read my diploma on IT. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I call this presentation uh, Baja California, the Southern Neighbor, um, because several words there uh, I wanted to, 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 for you guys to, to know. And I'm assuming that uh, many or some, at least some people uh, are gonna be uh, from the US and not necessarily familiar with the, with the region. Uh, and usually when somebody from somewhere else uh, thinks about uh, the, the place I live, they only call them Baja and that's it. Um, and for us, it's a little catchy because Baja is the whole peninsula uh, and I'll show uh, I'll show um, a map in a minute. Um, but what I'm uh, what I'm trying to say is that Baja California is a state and it's divided in in uh, two parts of the peninsula. So I'll show it in a, in a minute. Um, what it what this presentation is about it's uh, to show you more or less a picture of what uh, Baja California has to offer. Uh, this uh, great picture is uh, from a friend of mine, and you'll see several photos of him, Antonio Frias, uh, of Coronado Island. And uh, you may be familiar with this uh, because uh, Water Horse Charters from San Diego, good friends of us, uh, run a weekly trip almost uh, to Coronado Island. So if you have been on those trips, you have been visiting Tijuana a lot because yes. that's actually uh, part of Tijuana. <laughs> yeah, I always forget that because it's like you sign up for those trips and it's like, make sure you bring your passport. It's like, why? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's funny and it's, and it's also funny because uh, only boats from San Diego go to Coronado Island to dive. Uh, from Mexico, you have to go on a panga, which is uh, far more uncomfortable and there's no uh, 
no peer or, or uh, place uh, that you can take a vote out uh, all the way from to Ensenada is the closest. So basically San Diego is closest to us too. And um, this is, these are the maps I was referring. Um, what I wanted to show you is uh, on the top left corner, you see the state of Baja California. So you see that it's half of the peninsula. And, uh, and the lower half is Baja California Sur. So that's uh, another name, Baja California also, but you add the south part of uh, for to the name. And many people that think that are going to be diving to Baja, they think they're going to be diving in the south part. So that's uh, if that's what you were thinking, any of you guys, um, you're in the wrong presentation. Right. And the water's temperature is definitely different in the <laughs> south portion versus um, <laughs> where you're going to be talking about. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll talk about that too, because uh, I, I have even had calls from even from Mexican uh, citizens asking me to dive in, uh, in La Paz and then uh, Ensenada on the same day. And uh, that's a, a flight uh, for an hour and a half, forget to La Paz to Ensenada. So they don't realize how big it is and how far away they are. Um, before I, I change the slide, I want to show you also that those three uh, circles that you see at the bottom, uh, uh, the bottom map, uh, it's uh, more or less of the, the footage that you'll see today. So um, if I said that I was gonna have to do a Toro tour to Baja California, I lied a little bit because uh, I only gonna show you uh, three areas um, this time. I have dive uh, several other spots, but uh, I don't have footage or uh, I was teaching or some other reason. So I'll leave some stuff for the next presentation, hopefully. Yeah, the um, coastline looks like there's plenty of places to go diving there. Yes, and uh, and yes, there are all those uh, all those uh, places we have obviously lots of uh, coastline are diveable uh, and most of them are actually dive pretty often but uh, by commercial divers that they uh, usually uh, dive to get uh, sea cucumber, uh, sea urchin and a bunch of other stuff, abalone um, and not much uh, dive by recreational divers. Uh, the, the problem with this that at the same time is, a, is a, a, like a good thing for adventure is that most of that coastline doesn't have um, any any scuba cylinders uh, compressor to fill them up. So if you go there, uh, you need to bring everything with you uh, because commercial divers dive with a compressor on board and a hookah system. And that's why also many of the places in Baja are not uh, dive recreationally uh, because it's complicated. And right. distances are long, as you can see in this slide that I just uh, placed there so you can have an idea of what the distances are driving from the border to all those uh, different different places. Yeah, so it'd be more like an expedition type of dive where you need to bring all your gear, make sure you're, you're able to safely exit or get Correct. help if you have to. Yeah, and even uh, you need to be prepared in the sense of uh, in case you have an emergency, um, there's uh, some, several areas doesn't have cell phone signal. Uh, so you need to think on all of that if you're um, thinking on, on, on joining an adventure in Baja. Uh, at the shop, that's part of the plans that we are developing, like visiting sites and figuring out the logistics and then uh, to eventually bring back groups. So that's something that, that it's the reason why you see all this footage, because most of the footage that you see today, especially in, in the south of Ensenada, it's because uh, I went there to record it and see the sites and dive it for the first time, at least for myself. Um, and so in these two pictures, I'll just show you the difference on the coastlines. The one on the left is the Pacific and the one on the right is the uh, Bahia de Los Angeles. Uh, that uh, you, you people in the US, you call it uh, Bola or Bay of LA, Bahia de Los Angeles. And uh, Pacific Ocean diving. So in case uh, someone that is unlikely, I think, but if someone is not familiar with California diving, um, I can explain that you'll see uh, uh, some or less an environment like, like the one you're looking at the, at the uh, picture right now, that is uh, looking at Garibaldi's uh, blacksmiths and senoritas that you see over there. Um, I also wrote the uh, temperatures on the surface and underwater average uh, year, year round. Uh, so it's uh, pretty mild weather as in California, south and south of uh, California, and, uh, and the water temperature is, is pretty similar in the Pacific. Uh, so since you talked about seeing Garibaldi, this is maybe just a silly question. Um, Garibaldi is the state fish of 
California. Um, do people fish for them in Mexico? <laughs> Actually, uh, yes, yes, yes. I haven't eaten them. I, I, I don't think, I don't think they, they uh, it's not in my appetite, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe because I have seen them so much and it's actually my, my company's logo. <laughs> but, uh, <Well. laughs> but it's interesting because we were in Ensenada uh, with the group from San Diego and we went to a place called El Mercado Negro that it's basically a, a fisherman's, uh, like uh, a lot of shops that they, they sell fish. It's a fish, fish market. And, uh, and they have uh, a lot of Garibaldi's there for sale, uh, but they didn't say that it was Garibaldi. They said that it was a uh, uh, Wachinango or something like that. Uh, another name uh, for it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was dead Garibaldi's. Uh, the people from San Diego were a little bit uh, shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my running joke with people is they go, you know, I, I tell them, yeah, the Garibaldi, they taste like chicken. And I'm like, they're like, what? Like you've had it? I'm like going, no, it's, you can't take them in California. So. Well, you can, you, can take them, you can take them and eat them in Ensenada, uh, apparently, okay. but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some other things that I, I wanted to show you, it's the, uh, the, how dramatic the coastline is in, uh, in Baja. And, uh, and if you're looking for warm water in, in the Pacific side of uh, Baja California, you're in the wrong place because all the way to where the Baja California ends um, is cold. And, but the cliffs are, are impressive. Uh, this is actually a place uh, in Ensenada, uh, near La Bufadora, that it's, uh, you can see the park, guard park there. So from there, you, there's uh, steps to get all your weights and, uh, and tanks down. It's tiresome, uh, but it's uh, actually a pretty nice place, this one that I'm showing you. And there's tons of places very similar to this where you can get in and, and dive. Um, just for uh, you guys to see the usual sus suspects and uh, just in, as in California, these uh, pictures are from uh, Rosarito, I, I think, or maybe Ensenada, um, showing the strawberry anemone, the spinny lobster, and nudie branks, we have tons also. And also the, uh, you can see the, the, uh, the panga that uh, is a very typical uh, vessel that we dive out of. Uh, and on the back of this picture, what I'm, I think you see my laser, right? My laser? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is sugar love rock that you can see it uh, protruding from the ocean or getting out of the ocean in front of uh, Puerto Nuevo. If you're eating lobster at Puerto Nuevo that is pretty famous for, uh, you can see in the ocean this rock right here. And, uh, and you'll see some, uh, some pictures of it in, uh, in the next slides. And I do have to confirm that the, the lobster was very good and reasonably priced um, mm -hmm. going there. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that part of the trip. Um. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's as you said, just as you put it. And the flour tortillas are great, very famous for them. Uh, these pictures are from a, a kelp forest or small kelp forest in Rosarito, um, taken by Tiffany Poon from San Diego that you might know or heard of. Um, so this is uh, in, in front of Bajamar. It's a little, um, it's like in the, in the between Ensenada and Rosarito. And it's some places that we were exploring and apparently we, we hit the jackpot here. And just for you guys to know, kind of have a sense of where Rosarito is in the, in the peninsula, um, you can see there the, the circled areas on the, on the maps. Um, this point here is Tijuana. And, uh, and the other circles are Rosarito. So it used to be part of Tijuana. Uh, so it's pretty close to Tijuana. And then, so you, you run trips um, yes. pretty often to these areas? Yes, uh, actually the most common place that I go dive, uh, it's Rosarito and Ensenada and not Coronado Islands, which is the closest. Uh, and it's because of what I just explained to you that there's no infrastructure to go to Coronado uh, from the Mexican uh, side. Uh, right. surprisingly and i know that just so people know that if they are driving down the road system is actually pretty good to get down to that area um and it was a uh, very fast yes uh, the toll road from drive. uh yeah the toll road from uh that you can almost take from the border to all the way to ensenada uh it's awesome and it is also very with, with very good views because it's like uh, it's going through the like very uh, side of the coastline and yes it's where pretty well maintained 
Uh, this picture is actually from Sugar, Rob, uh, Sugar Love Rock in Rosarito. Uh, it's, it's an old one, uh, probably over 10 years ago, taken by Antonio Frias as well. Uh, I haven't seen those uh, sea stars uh, on that rock lately. Uh, and also, they kind of wipe out. I don't know the number, the number of that sea star, though, but uh, I have seen them. They were kind of wipe, wipe, out, wipe out from the area, but uh, they're starting to come back, surprisingly. I have to start seeing them again in Ensenada and Rosarito. But I not as many as in this picture. Yeah, the same thing was happening in San Diego. And not mm -hmm. that the waters are that far from each other. Mm -hmm. It was the same kind of thing. Yeah, and, and, and when you talk about Ensenada and Rosarito uh, conditions and, and environment, I'll say that it's basically the same as San Diego, uh, Point Loma, Kelbets, and all those kind of sites, because it's, it's the, there's no border underwater and they're pretty close. And in this, I'll show you my worst video first, according to me. Oh. <laughs> so so that's, this is where uh, you're gonna help me, Jack, playing this, uh, this yeah. video that I, that I uh, edited, automatically edited. So if it's not great, it's because of uh, randomness. Okay, so we're ready for the video. Mm -hmm. Should everyone should be able to see that? Oops, got to make sure I. There we go. And I do have the the music turned down on this just because so I don't run into potential copyright. Okay, and I was looking for for best best footage, and I think I do, but it's not. I couldn't find it. I, I just uh, was doing it. Uh, Maybe not the right thing to do, but I was doing last minute on, on the river. So I didn't do a good job on what I'm showing you on the river and the sugar loaf rock, rock. So it's a pretty short video. Um, but you'll see that there's a lot of life in the in the river. And this is probably uh, over six months old. Um, now you can see several, a lot of uh, school of fishes. Uh, strawberry and anemone were the, one of the first things that uh, developed there. Uh, and as I mentioned on the, on the bio, um, from when when the ship was uh, sink and and let me go a little further back uh, when there was an idea of, of sinking the Uribe, um should I use, uh, share the screen again I think right yep yeah you can okay. sorry it's just do, switching do it again. yeah okay and and then if possible can you make your presentation a little bit bigger when you share it so that it's a little bit clearer. Uh, the scaling on the the scaling is not right uh it's a little on some of the smaller text it's a little it's a little blurrier mm. let me see let me try to share it again but what i was trying i can explain what i'll do this uh, you're, uh, you're... let me stop the share so what i was saying is that um the well let me concentrate on this first apparently yeah yeah no go ahead uh, Just do the share portion of the screen just a little bit larger if possible. I mean, is that uh, any better? Hang on, it's, it's loading. Yeah, it's a little bit clearer now, yes. Okay. Okay, we can work with that. So what I was saying on the Uribe is that um, when there was a project of doing that artificial reef uh, um, from the like, getting donated the, from the, the Uribe was donated by the Mexican uh, army. Um, Dick Long from uh, DUI um, helped us and give us guidance on how the Yukon was, was done and the openings and how to prepare the, the ship and everything. So there was a lot of planning going on uh, beforehand. And the time that it, uh, when it sunk, we already did some cutouts of the hull so they can be hanging on ropes in the plan that we will be taking it periodically to uh, do a study of uh, life development. Uh, so that's something that we did right away from the sinking. And that's why I have a lot of dives on that, uh, on that wreck, uh, taking those things out. Eventually the, uh, the, the scientific in charge of the project decided to place also clay plaques and PVC to see how they, they work. And we did that that as well. So it was uh, over two years, almost three, that we were taking uh, out uh, plaques and they were studying them. So the first things that uh, attached to the hole were, were uh, nudibranch eggs and uh, eventually the strawberry anemones appear. Right. So it so was an interesting project to be uh, involved with. 
So there's some scientific studies going along, along with making it a diveable wreck. Yeah, that yes, of course. Uh, and there's some that might develop in the future um, because one of the ideas of uh, Paco Cell that I think is uh, listening to us right now, that is uh, the president of the uh, of the nonprofit, is to use the the Greg as a laboratory for studies that uh, uh, students from PhDs uh, projects in Ensenada uh, can use it. Uh, it like it could be like uh, planting uh, kelp or abalone or whatever they want to to do with it, uh, as long as it's not uh, damaging, obviously. So yeah, it's uh, the, that study of the uh, it's called bentonic uh, life. That is the one that is at the bottom. Uh, it's done already. I think it's in the process of uh, or or is in the phase of processing all the data. But uh, but it's uh, the project is done. It's finished. Right. So the the local governments were accepting of of having the ship or artificial reefs off your coast versus kind of like California. We kind of stopped everything. Yeah, I heard that the city doesn't want any more artificial reefs uh, uh, in the coastline. Yes, in Mexico, it's possible. It is, as, any, as in any country, uh, very complicated to do it the right way uh, because there's federal uh, federal requirements, state requirements, and also city uh, requirements to do it. So it took about over four, eight years to do it, not only because of the money, but also because of all the paperwork and studies that had to be done before. And uh, so now, uh, unless you have any questions on the Uribe, I can uh, move on to show you a little more of the coastline. Uh, this is Arbolitos that is very close and very similar to Camp Kennedy or Campo Kennedy. Um, that is the equivalent of La Jolla Shores for you divers from San Diego because uh, uh, Campo Kennedy is where most of us get certified in this side of the border as a beach entry. And it's very similar to this. Uh, the, the nice part of this area of the or this side of the hill is that there's no cell phone signal. So uh, you're only like 10 minutes away from from the wherever you can get signal on your cell phone. But it's nice to not have a signal and just focus on diving and, and, and give you that sense of uh, being uh, in the wild, although you're pretty close to, to the road. And uh, just to show you where Ensenada is to have some consistency, um, you can see where Tijuana is, the border, and Ensenada is just further south. Um, the wildlife you may encounter here is similar to, to Southern California. The, you can see some pictures here, like the, the tree fish, the green mori. We can see seals and sea lions as well. And, uh, and you can see a kelp forest over there with sea urchins and, and a bunch of usual uh, expected life. And now- So, so that's yes. a pretty protected cove area? Um, yes, yes, yes. And it's pointing south. And at least in Ensenada, most of the, uh, the currents are coming from the north. So most of the times it's pretty calm, although as, as it's the ocean. So sometimes you may get some rough seas. And there are several coves, like, like the one that I was showing, there's tons of them around the La Bufadora Peninsula. There is a very small peninsula uh, where you can dive on both sides and uh, have several coves. Some of them have, uh, you can drive your car down and some others have the, the some steps and some others are just trails and, uh, and are hard to get in and out, but, uh, but they are nice places to dive. Okay, so I see I'm supposed to share my screen now. Yes. Okay, let's start this video. Okay, so, so that's, I'm- That's the Uribe, this is, right? This is another, mm -hmm. No, this is not the Uribe. And no? this is okay. uh, something that I maybe, uh, uh, I don't know if somebody's gonna try to uh, tell me something about it because this is uh, an unknown wreck that was found near, near um, Todos Los Santos Island. But there was some kind of dispute. They don't know which uh, which boat it is, and it's probably been sunk there for over 40 years or so. Um, it's it's deep. Uh, it was a it was a technical dive. It's like 45 meters, uh, like a little like 145, 150 feet deep. This is a mix between Ensenada. So what you first saw at the beginning, it was a wreck uh, of an unknown uh, ship, and the um, the thing is that they don't know what boat it is and so there were some resistance on people getting to disclose where it's located 
So okay. I was taken to the site and uh, and it, it's nice, but it's deep. It's not recreational. Okay, you didn't bring that one. To, you didn't bring me to that one. <laughs> I haven't. I have only dived once, but uh, apparently the 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 bunny is out of the hat, as they say. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll keep playing the video now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And this is just to show you like a general idea of what you'll see in uh, in in general in Ensenada. This this footage is from uh, La Bufadora from Todos Los Santos. Uh, the Greg was from uh, from near the Todos Los Santos Island that is in front of the the bay in in Ensenada, in the city. And uh, you'll see a bunch of uh, very known wildlife that you'll encounter in in California as well. But uh, you also see a lot of uh, uh, yellow sponges and a bunch. It's, it's very colorful that in some sense is different from what you'll find in, in San Diego. And there's tons of sites uh, with uh, sinking rocks and walls and uh, arches. Um, this is not obviously uh, making uh, fair justice to, to what you can encounter in Ensenada because it will be impossible to, to show you uh, all. But, uh, but it, it's just to give you an idea. Um, of what you can find. And there's uh, the sites are from very new divers, uh, like 40, 50 feet to um, to way over beyond recreational limits. Um, as I stated, I'm, I'm starting to do tech diving. I'm actually new to it. But one of the reasons I started to do that training is because many of these sites, uh, if I want to explore them further, I stay longer to kind of uh, uh, understand the, the formations or how they, they uh, what else there is to be, um, it will help to stay there longer and also go a little deeper uh, to find some more kind of life. And that's something that Ensenada and Baja California in general has to offer a lot. So it looks like the bottom's a lot more rocky in the sense of it's kind of more like our Point Loma, I guess. Yes, and you can see a lot of, uh, there's a lot of big rocks that it will give you a very nice walls or even underhangs and, and things like that. Uh, and usually in La Ufadora, it's, it's exposed to, to clean water from the north. So it's, the visibility tends to be better uh, between 70 feet and over or, and more than that, uh, if, even if it's murky on the surface or close to the surface. So for me, at, at least in Ensenada, I'll, I think uh, the best diving in, that you can do is, is uh, not necessarily tech diver, but tech diving, but uh, 70, 80 feet is uh, what gives you the most uh, out of it. Okay, so everybody, you're back to seeing my screen, correct? Yep. Okay. Well, this is a. Uh, a kelp forest in Baja California, which, which uh, but with all honesty, I'm not sure exactly from where because uh, I didn't take this picture, but it, I'm, I can uh, tell you that this is from Baja California, 100% sure. And I want to show you another uh, video of the same area of Ensenada. That it, this is a, a a place new to me that is called Valle del Descanso. It's very close to to Camp Kennedy and uh, and and Arbolitos. That is the pictures that I show you before that I have been diving since I got certified. Uh, but this is a, a boat ride, and uh, and I has just done it twice. And it has it's, it's a big area. It's, there's a bunch of things there to to still uh, discover and explore. And I think this video does a, a fair uh, like, uh, mm, impression of what, uh, what it's about. There's a lot of fish. Uh, I don't have a macro lens on the GoPro, but, but if you could be able to see it, uh, you'll, you'll see that there are nudie blanks and a bunch of uh, small things. And in this video, if somebody, if some of you knows, let me know, because in one part of the video, I point out something that I don't know what it is. So let me know if you know. Well, the diver's finger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Switch to sharing screen. Uh, so a lot of these areas are are pretty much like new dive sites because there hasn't been a lot of like documented diving. I assume. Exactly. That's that's uh, the the right way to put it. Uh, they have been they they cer certainly have been dive recreationally for years, uh, thirty or more, or who knows. But we don't know because it's not documented. 
Uh, one of the projects that we have uh, from, even from the very start of the project of the river is to do a, a, a good diving guide of Baja California. And that talk has been uh, recycled uh, with the Mexican authorities every time there's no new government uh, in office uh, to get the funding mostly uh, of doing something right, like a book or something. So it's something that we discussed even a, a month and a half ago. And it will do a lot of help for, for us divers to get to know what it is and whatever we have discovered doesn't get lost in history just because we didn't document it. Right, it also helps promote uh, travel from outside, from other areas. Correct. Right. Okay, so here we'll go with the video. Maybe. And at that particular time, we probably were 80 feet or 70 feet, and it went down uh, further more, maybe 130, 140. Um, it was a good day, a little, there was a like um, red tide or something floating, uh, making it very dark. So mm -hmm. it wasn't as clear, uh, and it looked kind of nice, like night diving sense of it, but, uh, but it was still impressed with what I saw. This is the first time I dove those sites. I went I went back once already. But I'm looking forward to dive it in uh, October, November when the water is mostly or most of the times clear. Yeah, it's always interesting uh going to new new locations just to not only see the different structure but you know just seeing what else you can find. You know, the ocean mm -hmm. has so much stuff. Yes, and and honestly what we can uh, dive in one tank or in a couple of times is nothing. It's a very short distance. So to get to know one side, you see what it is. What is that? Oh yeah, I, I know. Okay, I've seen so, them. They're on the Yukon. And mm -hmm. it looks like a like a fluorescent uh, flower or something, but I wasn't clear where it was. Um, and. Oh, and also that same day, this this is a second dive. We were diving a place that it looked very much like La Jolla Cove, and it was shallow too, like 20 feet. And we were looking for giant sea bass because the 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 guy that took us diving, it was a commercial diver, and he said that he has seen uh, several times giant sea bass in that site, but could, we couldn't find them. Uh, you mean like the giant black sea bass? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're protected in California. They aren't in Baja. Uh, okay. They aren't. They they fish them, uh, which is a shame. We were dancing. Dan That's what laughing at the dancing, not the. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a shame. I have seen pictures of uh, of uh, mostly people fishing with uh, with uh, from the surface, and but taking four or five of them. It's it's a shame. They're not protected, as far as I know. In uh, in the Mexican side. Do you get? Do you see any of the uh, like the seven gill sharks and stuff like that in that area? Seven gills, seven gills. I haven't seen them personally, but uh, yes, you can see them. I have seen pictures of other divers from uh, from from Mexico City actually that did a dive in in it's called uh, San Benito Natividad. There are a couple of islands just in it's still in Baja California in the north part, but uh, but just borderline with uh, Baja California south. So yes, you can see the seven gills, uh, but not close to to us. It's like uh, probably an eight-hour drive and uh, an hour boat ride. Hmm. Yeah, because usually um, in the springtime we've been seeing the seven gills at in the La Jolla Cove area. So I'm assuming they swim all the way up and down the coast. Yes, 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 uh, they do. But it's uh, surprisingly it's not as close to the border as you would think. It's uh, way more <laughs> way, way more south, like. As I said, like eight hours on drive and and uh, far away. And but I mean, there's tons of things to to discover in the sense that they might as well see them. You can see them closer, but just I haven't heard of it. Um, in this, like this picture is from a uh, San Jerónimo, that is an island uh, close to El Rosario. Is the name of the, the town is south of San Quintin. 
And this was a very sur um, surprisingly good site that uh, we dove. And as you see, it's in the, in the center part of the Northern state that is Baja California. It's like a five hour drive from Tijuana to get there. Um, also thing, another thing that I want to, to share with you guys is that um, most of this, all the coastline has some kind of a, a fisherman um, co-op that are, they, they have the permit to exploit it commercially. So one of the things that happens also is that you may get in trouble if you get there, bring your boat, your Zodiac or whatever and go there and dive uh, with the locals because the locals are very jealous of, uh, of what their, their area is because they are obviously growing or let uh, fish get bigger, lobster, abalone, stuff like that. So if you ever go to those kind of places, you need to ask the locals uh, if it's okay for the water and diving. Uh, you, it might not be a really big issue, but it might be a, a big one as well. Right, so uh, they, don't, they don't want you to take the fish or the lobster so oh, if you do that, you will be in trouble for sure. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. uh, even if you have a permit that you bought uh, from the Mexican government and whatever, they don't care because it's their money. Uh, and they, right. like for instance, El Rosario is a great uh, example of uh, of conservation. Uh, I got the the. I it took me several trips to get to know the the locals and got and been allowed to take to the sites uh, because uh, first they wanted to know what do I want to do. Uh, and they didn't understand at, the, for at first that I just wanted to recreationally dive and don't take anything out of it and just take pictures. Uh, so once we got the talk going, eventually I got a pretty good relationship with them. And, uh, and they explained to me what happened, that they overfish the whole area. There was no lobster, no abulone, no nothing. Uh, so people start leaving town and the town is just for uh, fishermen. The other only thing that Rosario is famous for is for uh, the Baja Mil race. That is when the, uh, all these uh, race cars go down through the town. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, basically the rest of the year, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they get their, their money out of uh, fish. So anyways, they, they overexploited the, the ocean. And eventually the only thing that they had left was to... Uh, repopulated and, and they start planting abalone. Uh, they start to um, do sustain, uh, sustaining uh, fisher, fisher, uh, like fishermen uh, uh, like projects and they got funding from the federal government to not to fish one year or not to take lobster one other year and things like that. So now it's full with life and you'll see it on the video, but it's uh, they're very jealous of uh, of anyone that is close by, even if a boat comes there and, and they are going to fish, they rather ask them first. And they might even let you, but what they want you is to go there, ask them. And even uh, most what they are feel more comfortable with is that you pay them to guide you on those sites or or at least take you fishing. Right. So you leave well, some money in there. Well, that's, but it's also good to hear that they're not just fishing these places till they're completely barren. That, they are looking for the future and and stuff like that. So that's really good. Yeah, they went to the extreme uh, of not having nothing. So they learned that lesson and, and they're flourishing and they're pretty pretty healthy reefs and they are repopulating an abalone, black abalone, I think that it was something that it was already uh, extinct in that region. And they're working with the university in Ensenada. They're doing great things. They even give scholarship to people in, the, in town to keep studying. It's awesome what they do. That's good. So let me show you the, the video. And that's Miguel, the guy that was uh, on the on the boat there with the wetsuit. It's uh it's one of the it was our dive master and he's also the president of the the fisherman uh, company he loves to dive but he got cold we were all di <laughs> uh, diving dry and uh, and he was uh, using a, a an eight millimeter wetsuit which is a good wetsuit uh, but he never he didn't bail on us he said no i may, might be cold but i love diving so i'm gonna go down and uh, and he did like uh, nine nine dives nine dives and three days with us with a wow, wetsuit that's, that's uh <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yes, we were uh, using dry suits and, and we were happy with it. And as you see, it's pretty similar to what you have seen in, in, in the videos in Ensenada. And if you have dived in Ensenada, it's similar. But uh, especially, particularly, you'll see this is San Jerónimo. And then you'll see on the video that we go back on the boat. Uh, and when we did the second part of the video dive, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about in the sense that you see the ship heads, but several of them. Uh, we even got to see a, a swell shark, but it doesn't, it's not shown in the video. The pangas, they take them out very interestingly. Just go there and hit the sand with us in it. It was an interesting out of the water. Just drive them right up. Yeah. Yep. Lift the, they lift the outboard at that time. Mm. Yes. So it's... Yeah, and it took us several trips to, to find the right spots. We did actually with Tiffany and Richard Huey that you know as well. Mm -hmm. We went there the first time we went in March, the water was super green, and we did very, we dived very bad sites. It was a, a, a bad trip in the sense that we didn't see what we were expecting. We were expecting more of something like this. Um, so I went there a, a couple of more times and then eventually find the right spots. Because as I said, they dive the sites and you can see a commercial diver right there. Uh, hmm. They know the area, but they don't know what you're looking for in the sense of depth or uh, formations and things like that. Um, they, they obviously think on, on the ocean different and different levels, like uh, where there's more lobster to uh, take out or something else. So they, that was interesting also to be able to find those kind of uh, places. In those sites in uh, in El Rosario and also in Ensenada, you see a lot of sea lions, which are not shown in the footage that I have. For some reason, I didn't uh, have them, but uh, we saw sea lions as well. Yeah, it definitely looks like you have kelp and stuff too, so that's good. Yes, yes, it's pretty healthy. Okay, so we're back to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, and to get to the final phase of a uh, presentation, I'm just gonna show you one site on the side of the Sea of Cortez that it will be what most people will associate with uh, warm water uh, close by. And you can see the temperatures there, so are different. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, it's warm in some months, like uh, stirring, uh, April, uh, May, like right now, it start to warm up, but uh, but it gets pretty cold in the winter. I, I dove there in March and I was uh, using my dry suit and not because uh, because of you, that uh, you dive in warm water with the dry suit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I was using it because it was cold. I wasn't wearing a hood, but, uh, but the water was cold and I was using a, a dry suit myself. Yeah. I and and yeah, I, yes. am, I am diving warmer water at the dry suit these days, just because it's, if I'm going to go diving, I'm going to be in the water for hours. <laughs> and even at 75 to 80 degrees, that starts getting cold after hours and hours of diving. So anyways, that's just, normally I don't get cold, but after a while you start feeling it, especially after like nine days of diving. Yes, yeah, so like uh, Jackie uh, from San Diego also uses uh, dry suits on Florida and warm water trips, uh, which some people find odd, but I understand. I mean, uh, as long as you have an undergarment that is not as, uh, as thick, oh, yeah. it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, but yeah, Los Angeles is famous for the whale sharks that they go, they, the season is right, starting right now. Uh, and by the way, I'm driving there tomorrow, so I'm excited. Wow. And uh, and coming back on Tuesday, so it's just a, a short trip. Um, but it starts to the season right now. So the first whale sharks, I think, I already arrived. I'm, I'm following the the uh, the under the, the park, the reservation, or the preserve uh, page, and they already have whale sharks over there, and they stay there until November or December. Um, so I'm not expecting to see many whale sharks, but I might see some. Um, but this is a, a very nice place to go. There's snorkel when they're well charts and, and the diving is pretty good uh, also. 
Um, these are a couple of uh, pictures of you can you can see the the fish here that is uh, camouflaged, and you start to see the the warm water fish that you may see all the way down to Cabo, like the America and the sergeant and those those kind of uh, things. So it's a weird mix of uh, of uh, fish. And let me show you where um, Bahia Los Angeles is. So it's on the other side. It's uh, probably like nine hours drive. Um, and so what I was impressed on, on Bahia Los Angeles, uh, it's the variety of life and how it changes through the year. Uh, you can see fin whales on the surface. You can see orcas. I was there in September last year and, and, and there was a week that there were no whale sharks. They all disappear, and then uh, part of uh, orcas were there for a week. So that was the reason. Hmm. Um, you can see uh, pilot whales. You can see turtles. Um, in the winter months, you can see nudibranchs. So there's a bunch of variety. And also the other thing that I was surprised is the currents. Uh, low tide and high tide, and even you have to be aware on which part of the month you're diving. Uh, the currents could be very, very strong. I thought it was going to be warm water easy diving, and sometimes it isn't. Um, so there's like a picture of a whale shark. And this guy in here is actually uh, Dave Hinkle from Blue Abyss from San Diego. Uh, we went there last year. And let me show you uh, a video of the uh, of Bahia de Los Angeles from last year. And so these are the full-size whale sharks? Uh, yes, they're, uh, I think they're, yeah, you can see adults and, and, and also young adults. It's, yes, it's, they're, it's, they're not like, it's not necessarily a, like a nursery type of area. No, no, it's not a nursery. And uh, on, I have, I have been to Bahia several times to see the whale sharks. You can see my light there. Um, and I have seen groups of uh, 15 or, or more. If you're lucky, if you're not lucky, you at least see a couple. Uh, and the best, always is the best to go in the mid season when there's most more available. But if, if you don't see them, there might be some orcas in there. And you can see like uh, those uh, Gorgonians, there's all over the place, uh, warm water um, fish, the uh, it's also panga diving, but these pangas are pretty nice. Uh, by the way, uh, the only operation that uh, has um, tank compressors and everything in there is uh, Ricardo, Ricardo Arce. So you can see us Ricardo snorkeling, Ricardo snorkeling tours, um, I think you can find on Facebook. He's a, a paddy dive master and uh, he can take you diving. He's been diving there all his life. Uh, so he's the guy to, to, to reach. So what were the water temps when you were there? Um, These uh, videos, it was warm water. I was diving with uh, without a wetsuit some days because last year uh, I was certifying the uh, the some of the captains of uh, Ricardo's operation and I was finishing Ricardo's dive master course. So I stayed there for a month. I stayed almost uh, like 20 days in September. So I dove daily. And some days I use a wetsuit, some days I just, uh, uh, well, was uh, wearing shorts, and that's that will be finishing uh, a small tour to Baja California. And uh, let me show you this slide. <laughs> so I want to to tell the story of uh, of my American flag dry suit there that I'm wearing, <laughs> but it's obviously not mine. Um, I just wanted to state first that I'm a Mexican citizen. So there's no reason why I was wearing that flag. Um, the reason was that uh, I got to dive, uh, I got to guide uh, Dick Long, uh, the owner of DUI, uh, on the Uribe. And he, he asked me if I wanted to use his dry suit on the second dive. So that's the reason I'm wearing it. Uh, the first time I, I wore a dry suit and uh, it was quite a challenge to dive with it uh, because my fins didn't fit with the dry suit boots, so I got Dick's uh, fins as well. So it was a different kind of fins. I was using his uh, DUI uh, weight harness that I have never used before as well. So it was like all those things that you shouldn't do, like uh, change uh, 
three parts of the gear at the same time. Uh, but I enjoy it, and it was a pretty nice suit. And uh, once I end up uh, diving dry, I never uh, went back. It's a, a nice, nice piece of gear. So that's why I'm I'm wearing the Dick's uh, suit. Yeah, people still ask for the that red and white stripe, uh, but it's a, a pattern that a material we don't have anymore in stock. Really? Of. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a bummer. So, so it's a so when you see that suit or suits like that, it's uh those are rare. <laughs> huh. Well, but I'm glad that I have the picture, and uh, so I was using the Captain America suit for once. <laughs> okay, Jack. Well, uh, this is uh, kind of a grab setup in the sense that I want what I wanted to share with you guys. I wish I had some more footage, uh, but I, I'm probably gonna post some more stuff in the in the in my YouTube channel and, and things. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you have questions or follow up. Well, I saw uh, I saw a photo of me. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, I, I, I really like this picture, and it was end up being uh, uh, like edited on my uh, photos automatically as a gift, uh, so it, it has a movement. Uh, but it was nice uh, that you were you were helping us out setting up the uh, the OMS uh, side mount uh, harnesses. That yeah. we're really enjoying it. So you got to visit us here in our Tijuana pool. And I and I like having the the Velcro patch on my suit. So I actually have a Mexican flag on my sleeve that you may or may not see because it depends on whose screen is looking at it. it may not be as clear, uh, but yeah. I saw it when I saw the picture. I didn't realize it when you were there with us, but it was a nice touch. I'm glad that you have the Mexican flag. I yeah. can use the US flag and you can use the Mexican flag. And that's what it's, this is all about, bringing us together. So, uh... One of the questions that uh, was asked was, is Dale still operating out of La Bufadora? Um, the operation is still there. It's not Dale anymore. It's Dale's son. That is, uh, his name is uh, Jason. Uh, I don't know if you can reach him through Dale's phone, but uh, yeah, Dale's still around. But uh, now it's uh, J Jason is the one that can take you off. OK, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. That was a question from, mm -hmm. from one of our, our viewers of the presentation. Mm -hmm. So that, that was probably before my time going down there anyway. Yes, yes, uh, I knew I knew Dale from when I got certified. I uh, I went out with him, so I know Dale from a long time. So like 15 years ago. So here's another trick. It's kind of a trick question because um, <laughs> I know part of the answer. Um, if someone's unfamiliar with diving in Baja, are there specific dive shops? Hmm. <laughs> 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 so I kind of know that one. Um, well, one of the or dive shops, tour groups, boats, clubs, etc., um, that they can travel with to these various dive sites or resources to discuss the logistics with. Um, well, I own a dive shop, obviously, right? So right. I can, That's I I can, a trick question. <laughs> I can, I can, I can take you to those sites. Um, the only thing is that it's something that I haven't scheduled yet because on those um, dives, you as you saw the vessels, they're small uh, boats, so usually works on groups of uh, five or uh, between three and, and five people, um, or it needs to be on those multiples. So to make it feasible. And the other one is that for most of that diving in the Pacific, particularly, you need to be a pretty solid uh, cold water diver because the, the ocean is rough, the driving is long, uh, the boat rides could be wrong. And uh, to be able to go to those sites and dive them, uh, there's no place to do a weight check or, I mean, or it could, but it will be a waste. Um, right. So in that yeah. sense, if uh, there's people that want to do it, uh, you can go ahead and, and ask me and certainly we can arrange it. Um, I'm not the only uh, dive shop that there's around. I'm unaware and as far as I know, those kind of trips are not offered by other dive shop either. Uh, but there's at least three dive shops in Ensenada that are operational as well. In Tijuana, I'm the only one, but in Ensenada, there's been diving shops for 40 years. Right. So they're able to get tanks and stuff if they need to there, or, or yes. if they're coming from the U.S. Um, I know when I when I came, I brought my own tanks. Mm -hmm. um, Especially if you like uh, steel tanks, that will not be something that is uh, available for, for rental. Right. So the maybe not necessarily a, a wider variety, you know, customizing towards like 
technical divers and stuff like that. But more that's something that that is being developed uh, because, uh, for instance, now I have I can feel nitrox in here, and and I become I be, just became a tech diver. So my plan is to eventually uh, do tech the tech dive. Um, Take take divers on those trips because that's a uh, that's something that personally we want to do on 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 the group of divers that we have. I already have uh, doubles like four or five set of doubles that I can uh, I can use. So it's is we are going towards that way. Um, so and I have taken even rebreather divers to the rib and things like that. So I'm familiar with that. It is possible to do. There's some uh, infra like. Um, there's some things already in existence that can uh, make those things possible, but it does require um, planning um, to be safe. Mm -hmm. So, so regarding the pongas, uh, if so, people that may not be familiar with a ponga versus like a, a dive boat, maybe out of the U.S. or somewhere in the Caribbean, where you have a, like a nice swim step that you come up on, a ponga is basically just a converted what fishing boat? Uh, it, how is would you a fishing, that? it is a fishing boat. Uh, it doesn't most of the times doesn't have a ladder. Um, so you have to um, you go the backflip in, but on the way in or back in, you need to take off your your weights, your gear, pass it on. The captain is gonna pull it, and you need to do a jump uh, that takes some training to to get the the hang of it. Uh, right. So it is uh, something to consider if you have uh, your you have uh, some injury in your back or some things like that because it's rough. Right. Uh, it's not as as nice or as easy to get back into those things than uh, than a, a dive boat. Right. And so it's there something are some that, physical considerations to look. Yes, at. yes, yes, yes. And we we make this the best we can to make it comfortable, in the sense that uh, some pangas have ladders and even I try to make a ladder myself, but the thing is that there are different dimensions. So a ladder doesn't work for every panga. Uh, so that's one of the challenges that has been uh, happening in here. Um, there's a, a, a fishing boat, but, uh, but it's a big one that has a, a step, doesn't have a ladder yet, but I've been in, in talks with them so they can install a ladder because they use them for fishing. For fishing. Uh, but that boat can sit like 15 divers but it's for local trips to La Bufadora and, and Ensenada. So that's the nicest that is. The, the nice thing about it is that it's not a panga. It has a, a, a restroom. It has some kind of, it has even a fridge and a kitchen and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's some projects on doing something that is uh, nicer, but you should always uh, make sure that, uh, that you talk to me or whoever you're going diving with to the specifics, because it's not going to be the American standard because right. there isn't those kind of uh, um, boats available, at least not not yet. Yeah, so uh, uh, definitely a, a thing on the Ponga side is they get there fast. <laughs> um, that, that's a good they're, thing. They're, they're not a slow boat and you, you get kind of zippy travel a long distance relatively quick. Yes, yes, I like them, but, but there's some uh, limitations to them. So a uh, question about uh, the, the Ensenada area with the Uribe 121. So there's rumors of a possibly having a submarine from that's currently docked in San Diego um, as a artificial reef there. Is that still, you know, if that's still in talks or where that's at? I think it's, it's uh, I think it's the, the talks are, are at least stalled. I don't know if it's gonna eventually happen, but as far as I know, there were some talks uh, about taking the Russian submarine that is uh, sitting in San Diego to bring it here. But uh, I'm, I don't think it's likely that it's gonna end up here at least soon. It might be later, but but uh, as far as I know, there's no more. Uh, it's not. It's not a go um, at this point. Right. That's uh, there. Say again. No, I was saying it's kind of tough because. It, if talks are stalled, because I know that right now they are constantly pumping water out of it to mm -hmm. keep it afloat in the harbor in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, and I think both parties were were uh, happy uh, to do it, but it always comes comes down to uh, to money in in a project like that. It, it takes a lot of money to to move it, to float it, to bring it, uh, and it's not the best time for uh, 
for for the nonprofit in the sense that with all this uh, uh, craziness of COVID last year, uh, that kind of project is the first one that loses funding since we all uh, have different priorities uh, in our households, I, I think. Right. So uh, I just want to mention something from a U.S. perspective, US, U.S. citizen perspective, traveling to going into Mexico or Tijuana is is actually very quick. Um, you know, people, you know, worry about driving their cars down there. I mean, I worry about the potholes. Every once in a while, I, I keep an eye out for <laughs> where I'm driving, but the roads are, are generally in, in good shape. Um, and you do have to be an aware driver, especially if you're not familiar with the area, um, different things. Um, and I would suggest getting, uh, you know, the Sentry or the Global Entry um, for, especially if you're driving over the border for on the way back. Um, so in the old days, people used to go to Tijuana just to go party and then come back to the US, which I didn't quite understand, but traveling back and forth with dive gear in a car, having that the Sentry Lane or the Global Entry was definitely beneficial, makes it uh, traveling back and forth so much, so much better, um, so much easier. And, and the border is open for uh, at least the U.S. citizens to travel into Mexico and back and forth, so there shouldn't be an issue. Correct. And also, uh, adding to that, um, also the vaccination in here is also happening uh, because in, in California, as far as I know, it's, it's uh, wide open to everyone. In Mexico, it's a little behind, but it's still uh, ongoing and many people are vaccinated already. There's obviously some restrictions on using um, face cover, but uh, yeah, it's open. The border is open to U.S. citizens. And I think if you plan to come more than once in your life, get the center of the global entry. It's worth it. It's not that expensive. And it's a game changer on the way back. Because if you're very uh, with very bad luck, you may end up uh, waiting a long time at the border going back to the US. Yeah, so I don't recommend coming back on a Sunday evening type of thing. Um, without the global entry or century. Correct. Yeah. Some of my friends or, can attest to you. <laughs> yes. I have heard of some people like that. And also US holidays um, is a, a bad idea because it's gonna, many people come to, to, to Mexico on those uh, weekends and the waiting is longer to go back to the US. Yeah, but I just wanna make sure people know that it's not like some scary adventure. I mean, obviously we are, you know, from the U.S. going to a different country, so there's some border things that you have to go through. But um, me traveling to to Tijuana and the Ensenada area, I I found it actually quite pleasant. Food was good. You know, people were nice. I didn't understand half the things that were being said. Um, like for example, my, you know, when you say I'm a diver, uh, now you can say uh, what I kind of laugh at is was for in Spanish it's buzo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I don't. I'm probably saying it wrong, but I, I always laugh at that. Um, Actually, you, you pronounce it well, and it's, it's like, funny. I didn't realize <laughs> what it could mean in, in English. Yeah. So yes, we are, we are all boozers. <laughs> I'm, I'm a boozo. Uh, no diver. Um, so so yeah. So there's you know some of that. You know you yeah, kind of go with if, it. And any of you guys who want to come and dive here, honestly, I'll, I'll do my best to give you. Um, the best advice on where to stay, uh, where to drive, uh, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, whatever I can do to help you um, easier, uh, make your trip easier, I'll, I'll, I will. Um, also, there's a lot of offer or a lot of touristic uh, places to go in the sense of uh, breweries, restaurants. There's a bunch of other stuff to do. Uh, over here, you can dive and go there to a restaurant in the evening, and it's a pretty pleasant and nice weekend that you can have. Um, in, in a restaurant, I can say that almost everywhere, uh, there will be some bilingual waiter or, or waitress that will help you. So even the language uh, might not be a problem, or at least not that much. Yeah, the, the brewery you brought me to the other day, that was, that was pretty nice, and the food was good. Yes. So, so I can definitely say it's a, a positive. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot to mention one thing for people traveling to uh, Mexico to go diving. As, as far as like crossing the border, you have to get a, um, a pass, a tourist card that says you're diving, um, but it's, it's free, right? 
you just have mm-hmm. to go and stop at the checkpoint and say, I'm going to be diving X number of days, you know. Yeah, and there, there's some uh, catch part about it. You can uh, do the process online. Uh, there's, there's a link that I can provide if somebody's interested. Uh, and you just stamp it at the border uh, and it's free. But if you don't bring it, um, there's some, that one is supposed to be to, to up to seven days or something like that. So if you don't bring it at the border, they might charge you $6 because they're going to be with one that is for six months or something else. Uh, so that's why sometimes uh, I have heard that people get charged for it. So it's because it's a different permit. Right. Don't ask me why they do it, but that's what they, what they do. Just so you know, I always forget to get the stamp. Mm-hmm. I, I filled out the online form and have it printed out, but I... It happens because one thing that is true in Mexico, and remember, I'm Mexican, it says there's no signs. The signs on the roads are non-existent or they're very late in, in the road. Like right when you should be turning, there's that's the way you want to go, right? Right. So in the, the sense, many place. many people uh, miss the pulled over, pulled over section on the border so they can get stamped the, the permit. So yeah, that's part of the culture. Okay, so we're we're a little bit past our time. Um, I just want to say thank you for for doing this um, this presentation. It was awesome. I like as I like I said, I always like talking about about diving and what there is out there, you know, what, what people can, you know, go and explore and, and all the different things that you can see out there and something in this case, right across the border from San Diego, it's, it's you know, there's a lot more stuff to be explored. Um, so thank you for, for doing this this month. So thank you for awesome. having me, Jack. What's my pleasure. And look forward to diving with you again really, really soon. Yeah, we so. should do it with Sidemount now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and maybe bring me to that wreck that uh, in Tato Santos that I didn't know was there. Yes, um, we should go there and dive it. I only did it once, so let's go there and do a, a, a nice dive over there. So that'd be good. Um, so <clears throat> just as everyone knows, um, again, we'll be presenting on the first Thursday of, of July, um, and that will be on the reef uh, restoration project in Florida. Um, and then we have some other presentations already scheduled for upcoming stuff. Um, for those of you with dive shops or in different locations, um, if you're interested in and also wanting to present with the deep dive with DUI, um, please contact me. Um, you can uh, send messages via Facebook or email, which is, I don't have a link on there, but it's uh, jder at divedui.com. Um, and we can arrange something in the future. So with that, uh, so thanks everyone for coming. And I'm going to share my screen one last time. And this has uh, some basic information uh, for ways of reaching Jorge um, and some of the different social media stuff. So thanks for coming everybody. I'm going to mute, bye. (laughs)